Hey everybody, I'm Todd and this is Sweet Tea Guitars. Thank you so much for stopping by the channel and welcome to the Great Guitar Build Off 2022. Alright you guys, when we left off in the last Cloud9 video, we got the neck to the point where it was faceted but not shaped. I've still got plenty of work to do up in here in the volute area or the volute, uh, whichever you want to call it. I've got plenty of work left to do up here in the hill transition. Our fretboard is radiused but not fretted. I need to get the side dots installed and we need to drill our tuners in, do a little bit more sand and work on the headstock, get this thing ready to glue into the body. But before we do that, and what I want to get covered in this video, I want to get some work done on this body and get this thing up to a point that it's ready to have the neck glued into it. I want to do my sanding and the bevel carving and all that stuff before the neck gets glued in to keep me from having to handle, you know, the whole guitar as one piece. I think it'll work out better in the long run if I do it that way. Uh, there will be less of a chance of me damaging this guitar. And that's the big thing. A few things that I want to do to this thing, and we'll talk about this before I crank up the spindle sander. I need to drop this cutaway down. If you'll look down inside that neck pocket, I've got a shape drawn in there based on where the heel of my neck comes to. So I need to cut that excess wood off. We'll carry it over to the bandsaw and do that in just a minute. Based on that... I need to carry this cutaway right here a little bit deeper into the body and I need to sand a little bit more on the end of this horn to get my alignment pin sanded away out of there. First things first, I want to get this neck pocket cut and get this excess wood removed and get it closer to what the final shape's going to be. Use the Shinto and the Iwasaki's to homogenize that neck shape into my body. I want that to be one flowing shape. Let's cut this first. I am excited to be back on this build. I hope you guys have enjoyed the last couple of videos I released. Let's get this cut real quick. Now, first thing I'm gonna do is cut this off straight. So I want to create a little dip right there. I'll sand some of this off so this is not coming to such a sharp point. We're going to fire up the spindle sander and get some more work done on these cutaways. Let me check and make sure I'm happy with the diameter of the drum we've got on the spindle sander right now. We're all good. Let's crank up the vacuum cleaner and get some work done on this body. I've got one bump right up here that we need to take care of, but it's very small and I can do that by hand. I didn't take these horns any further because I know I'm going to be doing some treatments to them and we're about to start doing that right now. I'm going to take my 0.9 millimeter pencil and let's draw out this bevel I'm thinking about. I want it to come from kind of skinny. I want it to go fat right there. Now, I don't want to take away too much of this beautiful flame maple. So, even though I'm drawing that really wide, I only want my reveal of the Paduke below it to be about a half an inch to three quarters of an inch wide. The one thing I am absolutely certain about is the reveal right here. So, I think we should just get on that. We'll go from there and see what the guitar tells us it wants to have done. So let's rake this point off. And I can see the Paduke starting to reveal. I'm going to switch over to the Iwasaki up in this area so I'm not...
taking away so much material all at once. So I want that line to follow the outside of the body shape. I want this to be nice and flowing and then come to a point right here, wide, wider, 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 back to somewhat of a point and create that S. What I want to do now is clean up down in this belly area. So what I'm planning on doing here, I want a wide to a skinny bevel, but I want it to taper back as it goes so it'll have some dimension to it when I sand all this and once we get some finish put on it let's just keep working on this thing this part was giving me a little bit of trouble just me trying to figure out exactly what I wanted to do with that I don't mind this Padute stripe showing right here but I want it to completely disappear by the time it gets over here how I can accomplish that if we get any showing right in here I can carry it back to the spindle sander and just knock a little more off of this area right here it won't take much other than that I'm pretty happy with that shape honestly it looks pretty fluid I do need to flatten it up slightly You kind of have to figure out which way the grain wants you to go with the scraper or it'll leave little stutter marks. The scraper just helps get the, uh, the file marks out of there a little quicker. The main reason I like to use a scraper on this stuff is because it flattens the bevel out. Got 80 grit on this block. This is also a nice, firm sanding block. I want to sand with this 80 until I'm certain, first of all, that I'm flat on my bevels. But I also want to start paying attention and setting myself up for the 240 grit or 180, whatever we decide to go with. I want to make sure I'm getting all those heavy file marks left by the various cutting tools that we've used on here out of there. Another reason that I decided not to rate these back any further and make them wider is because the further back you go, the more of a feather that you sand into the edge of this maple. The more of a feather you sand into the edge of the maple, the more risk you're taking on getting a little fuzzy edge. It's hard to get a nice hard line on that maple if you rake it back too flat. Hold that in the right light so you can make sure you don't have any jagged edges or you know, if that line looks off anywhere, now's the time to start dealing with that kind of thing we've got time to sort it out but we need to start thinking about getting rid of that kind of stuff now this is 180 on this little soft block and I don't want to bear down too hard or I'll sand a profile into it just want to get rid of some of those 80 grit scratches and then I'll switch over to 240 grit and this will just help that go a little quicker all right, 240 grit, a new sheet on a hard interface pad. When you're doing this on the bevels and you're sanding the actual bevel, don't worry too much about rounding this top edge over because we're going to hit this whole flat top right here with the random orbit sander with some 180 grit. Actually, we'll start with 80 grit not much pressure at all then we'll go to 180 then we'll go to 320 maybe 220 but probably 320 straight from 180. if you want to keep a good hard line you have to use a good hard block because a soft sanding pad will not produce a hard line 
Now, one thing I will also say about sanding figured maple. You have to be super careful when you're sanding a highly figured top set like this, whether it be maple or any other highly figured piece of wood. Not only is it important that you use a hard interface pad for this, but it's also super important that you let the sandpaper do the work. Don't bear down too hard because there's different densities of wood between there. Open pour, closed pour, you know, tight grain, a little bit looser grain or whatever. That will show up in your sanding job. And if you bear down too hard, it will take that softwood out at way too fast of a rate but not the harder parts and you'll get ripples in the areas that you want to be flat so just be mindful of that when you're sanding i'm going to flip this thing upside down we're going to take some of this material right here away We're going to have to go pretty deep on this because if we don't, it's going to feel all thick and chunky right here. And I don't want to take any more off the front. That means this material has to come from the back. What I'm doing is I'll tilt my file up like this and I cut that edge off. And then I'll start leveling my file out and bringing it back down this way and I'll flatten that carve out a little bit. I don't want to get too far over that way. You don't want to start to compromise the bottom of your neck pocket. You know, there's an area right here that you could sand through and I don't want to do that. You know, I want to wait till my neck's glued in before I start messing with that. But what I'm looking for is when I place my hand down in this cutaway like this, I want to be able to touch the top side of the neck with no problem. And we're pretty much there. Let's put a belly carve in this thing. Shinto. All right, we're going to move over to the Iwasaki. This is the medium cut. Yeah, so on the side, I just don't want to create a jagged line. I want it to be smooth and flowing. Let's take our scraper, flatten this out a little. I'm out to impress myself, you know? I'm not looking to win anything. I don't, I don't even care about that. I like being held to a standard, you know? I like holding myself to a standard that someone else set. That's one thing I love about the great guitar build off is that standard is as high as you care for it to be. All right, you guys, there's my build for the great guitar build off. This is the Cloud Nine. I'm happy with it so far. I still think I need to drop this down a little more, but I'm not going to come too far. All right, you guys, when I left off last night, we were working on these bevels around the outside edge, and I've pretty much got this to the point now that I want to work a little on this, on this cut right here. I don't want as much of the Paduke exposed in this area i want it to taper away as it comes back up into here so i want to take this back to the spindle sander i've got a little bit of a rough little ripple going on right here anyway so we're going to work on this for a minute let's turn the vacuum on and get back over to the spindle sander it's hard to make sanding interesting There's where we are right now. You know, we got our sides nice and smooth. I wanted to show you guys something real quick and I really hope this shows up on camera. 
I want you guys to look at this grain right here in that Paduke. I'll try to get my face out of the shot so it focuses on that. Look how beautiful that is. That is just lovely. I love that. And I had guys suggesting on the channel because I had a mere allergic reaction to Paduke that I stopped using it. It's not going to happen. I think the barrier cream's doing its job, you guys. I really do. All right, so I think now... Before we do any more work to the neck, which I think I'm going to save for the next episode, and this reminds me, I've got a yoga mat right here that was sent to me by my buddy Bill from Borgonian Evolution. You guys check his channel out on YouTube. Bill's a good dude, and he and I have become friends since starting the great guitar build off. Now what I want to do is cut myself a body size chunk of this yoga mat. And then I'll save the other part so I can cut myself a piece the size of the entire guitar once it's put together. We can sand on this and the way this mat's made, unless you get metal down inside of here, this mat's not going to scratch this body. It provides a protective surface to lay this body down on. I want to work on the back a little bit. So let's get out of our sander. I am using a sheet of Merca Abernet sandpaper. It's a six inch disc on a five inch sander, but it works great. And you can kind of see what color Padoop wants to turn after it sits a while. It gets that nice reddish brown tone, which I love. But we're about to turn it back bright orange. You want to be really careful when you're sanding areas like this, a little thin strip. It will remove a bunch of material real fast if you're using 80 grit. Just be mindful when you're going over these kind of areas to be fast about it. Don't hang out, you know. So I'm going to start to sand this now so I can get this down level with my, uh, with my maple. So I've got this little sanding pad right here that came off of a, a teardrop shape that I cut and made several little blocks out of. You want a nice hard material for what we're about to do. So we got a nice flat hard sanding block. I'm just going to start working on this bevel right here. 80 grit at first. And don't bear down too hard. Just let the sandpaper do its thing. This body will not see 80 grit sandpaper again after this. Uh, hopefully ever. And you want to catch everything that we can while we're in this position. You don't want to move your body around too much. The more moving you do, the more chances you take of scratching it or putting a gouge in it and I just kind of use that as a a baseline you know move the body as little as possible and I'm just getting rid of file marks right now is all I'm doing I want this shape to be nice and clean we're pretty much sorted everywhere but here and the perimeter of the body so we're going to work on that for a little bit. I'm going to get some 80 grit sandpaper and wrap it around my round block. We'll get some 80 grit and put it on my flat hard block as well and get this body prepped to be able to glue this neck in. And now I've taken this up through 80 grit on the spindle sander, but the problem with the spindle sander it leaves little dimples in the side of your body. Really, the only way to get this kind of stuff like this perfect, or as close to perfect as you can get, is by doing it by hand. Um, you have to do this kind of stuff by hand, I think. 
and this makes all the difference in the world in the end you guys I'll be doing some more work on these once we get the neck glued into the body we're going to switch over to 180 and we're going to take this all the way up to 320 grit then we'll stain it we'll seal it and finish it which I'm still in debate over how that's going to be done and I was thinking about using a 2k finish on this guitar uh, like an automotive clear coat but I love how a hand rub oil based finish looks so much that that's probably how I'm going to go with this thing this is the most boring part of a guitar build for you guys but this is an absolutely necessary part of a build all right you guys so i spent the past hour or so sanding on this body i've got it to where i want it we've got all our bevels done i'm sanded up to 180 at this point i didn't go beyond that the back's like i like it we got all that sorted out I got my cutaway bevel sorted. I am really happy with how the shape's turning out. I'm happy with the, how the whole body's turning out. To give you guys a quick preview before we wrap this thing up, there's the Cloud9 build, you guys. I, I love this guitar. Ben told me to keep this guitar and not to donate it to the great guitar build off. He seems to think I should keep one. And I think I'm going to listen to him. I think I will keep this one. All right, you guys. Surprisingly enough, we're going to wrap this video up right here. I've been helping a buddy of mine get some stuff sorted for a move. And I've had things I needed to do around the house. So I lost a little bit of build time here in the shop. I usually don't like to wrap up a video unless I've actually completed a process. But if you guys will take a look at this body... We're sanded up to 180 all around it. The perimeter sanded. Um, all my cutaways are sanded down in there. This relief carve I did right here is nice and sorted. All my bevels are nice. Everything on this guitar is sanded up to 180 right now. And it is really coming together super nice. I am happy with this thing. I really am. I hope you guys are okay with me ending this video right here and releasing one short video for a change. I promise in the next video we'll get a lot more work done. Which brings me to this. In the next video, what I would like to have completed, and I said I wasn't going to do this, but I'm trying to push myself at this point so I can get this guitar finished. I want to get this neck a little bit closer to its final shape. We definitely want to work on the volute. I want to do a little bit more carving on this heel transition before we glue this neck in. We'll get our tuners drilled in. I'll do some sanding on the back of this neck. We'll deepen our fret slots, get the frets put in the neck before it gets glued in. And um, I'll install the side dots as well. So we will get that done in the next video regardless of what happens. I will also drill in all my wiring paths. We'll get the cover sorted out. I'll mark out where my strap buttons are gonna go. We'll get the neck glued in the body. We'll only have a few more episodes after this next video and this guitar is gonna be complete. We're coming down to the end of this thing, you guys. We're at the phase now that things are gonna start to move along really quickly. Finish on this guitar, I've decided to go with an oil finish over the stain. Once I stain this guitar with that linear fade that I've been telling you guys about, I can't wait to try that. I'm then going to seal this guitar with some Mohawk sealer. We'll sand it, make sure everything's flat, make sure we don't have any grain showing through, at least on the maple. And then we'll start to wipe some oil on this guitar. I am going to use a gloss oil. So I will buff this guitar on a buffing wheel when I'm done with it. It's really important to me that I highlight this grain all around the side, on the back, um, all on these bevels. I really want to highlight that, that Paduke reveal right here. And I don't think 
a spray finish is going to give me what I'm looking for. Oil really gets down in that grain and highlights that grain. And Paduke's such beautiful wood and it's got such a beautiful glow to it when you put oil on it that I've decided that's pretty much how I'm going to do it. I'll probably use Osmo Pollux hard wax oil on this guitar. This thing's going to look completely different by the end of the next episode. We'll be up to a point by that time that we can start looking and seeing what hardware is going to look like on this guitar. So I am so excited, you guys. And I really want to thank all of you for the part you've played in getting me to a thousand subscribers and keeping my channel going and making me feel so great as a human being and as a guitar builder from all your killer comments. Thank you guys so much for that. I will never be able to thank you guys enough. Please continue to come back to the channel. If you have not hit that subscribe button yet, please consider doing that. Throw me a thumbs up. Leave me a few comments. Let me know what you like about the channel, what you'd like to see changed, and um, what you like about this build. I really appreciate it. As always, you guys, until the next video, peace and love. Yeah.